Hello everyone, my name is Rachel and welcome back to another true crime video. So the case that I have for you guys today is the Athena Strand case. This has been a very ongoing case. I've been following it since the very beginning, but I wanted to wait until we had enough information on this case to release a video about it. But now there has been an arrest affidavit released, so I do think that now is a good time to bring this video to you guys and tell you guys the details of this horrific case. Of course, with this being such an ongoing case, I will keep you guys updated as more information comes out about everything, but I think finally we have a pretty good picture of what exactly happened to this little girl. Seven-year-old Athena Strand lived with her biological mother, Maitland Grandy, in southern Oklahoma, but she was living with her father, Jacob Strand, and her stepmother, Elizabeth, in Paradise, Texas, at the time of her disappearance. I believe her mother had full custody of Athena, but she was letting her do a semester of school in Texas at the time. She had planned on bringing Athena back after Christmas break. Athena was described by her mother as being beautiful, kind, intelligent, and just the brightest and happiest soul you could ever meet. She loved to dress up as a princess and had dreams of growing up to be a Viking princess, and she wanted tattoos just like her dad had. She had two little sisters who she absolutely adored and she loved anything pink. She loved animals, jewelry, and basically anything shiny. Her favorite place to eat was at McDonald's. Her mom said that she would literally eat McDonald's three meals a day if her mom and dad would let her. She also loved eating candy just as any other little girl does. She loved swimming, jumping off of the diving board, and just being outside whenever she could. She loved going to school, drawing, and just had the most infectious laugh. Now, Jacob and Elizabeth had actually been living in a shed on their property that was converted into a bedroom and a living room while Jacob had been doing renovations on the main area of their home. On the day that Athena went missing on Wednesday, November 30th, Athena had gone to school and returned home as normal, getting off of the bus at her normal time, which was 4.15 p.m. At the time, Athena's dad wasn't home, so it was just Athena and her stepmom that evening. After Athena got home from school, it was said that she and her stepmother got into a little argument, which wasn't a totally uncommon occurrence for them. This can definitely happen when you have a little girl with a big attitude. It just happens. But either way, after the argument, she said that Athena became very frustrated, so she walked off and went into her room for the evening. After this little argument, Elizabeth went into the main area of the home, which once again is not connected to the shed that they were living in. It was a separate area that you had to walk outside to get to. While inside, Elizabeth went and made some dinner for the two of them while she waited for Athena to calm down and come and have her dinner like she normally would have. However, she didn't come out of her room like normal, so after about 20 to 30 minutes, she went to the shed into her room to go and check on her and to tell her that dinner was ready. This was at around 5.30 p.m. that same day. But when Elizabeth went to go check in on her, Athena was no longer in her room. Elizabeth said that she looked around the house for about an hour before deciding to call the police to report her as a missing person, which was at around 6.40 p.m., and the police arrived about 14 minutes later. Now, there has been some question about why it took so long for Elizabeth to report Athena as a missing person. But Elizabeth explained that before calling the police, she had called her sister and her brother-in-law who lived next door to see if Athena went to their house because that's something that she had done before, but she wasn't there. So of course, they also started looking for Athena. Then Elizabeth called Jacob who was out in San Antonio on a hunting trip with his father she told him that she wasn't able to find Athena. This was after she had looked around for like a half hour and after calling her sister and brother-in-law and having them look for her, that is when she called Jacob and he told her to immediately call the police 
and report her as a missing person. Then Jacob and his father immediately turned around and headed home to search for Athena himself. At that point, Elizabeth said that she thinks Athena walked out of the house that evening and went off somewhere, but family members and the neighbors said that they did not think that this was the case because Athena was scared of the dark and it was cold out at the time. They said that the only way that Athena would have left is if she walked to her grandmother's house, which is something that she did frequently. Once again, she lived next door. So immediately, there were some speculations on Elizabeth, but a lot of this situation that came out in this police affidavit that sort of explains why it took her about an hour to report Athena as a missing person. Pretty much right away, an Amber Alert was issued for Athena. They reported that she was last seen wearing a plaid jacket, a gray long sleeve shirt with flowers, blue jeans with flowers on the pockets, as well as brown boots. Immediately after Athena went missing, police went out in full force to search for her. Her mother also drove down from Oklahoma to search for her and do whatever it was that she could to help find her daughter. They searched abandoned sheds around the area. They searched the woods behind her father's property and within the surrounding areas. For the following three days, around two to 300 people in the community came out to search for Athena. They covered a five-mile radius around the home using sniffer dogs. People brought out their horses to search. They used ATVs and walked on foot, all in the efforts of trying to find this missing little girl. Literally, the entire community came out to help find Athena. They woke up first thing in the morning and they searched until it was too dark and too cold. I saw in one report that they literally searched that first day until 4.30 a.m. and then they returned back to search again at 7 a.m. that next day. They absolutely did everything that they could to find Athena. The initial thought was that maybe she had run off because there were no signs of an abduction. There was no break-in. There was no struggle being seen. There was no witnesses to say that they saw a suspicious man or woman in the area, but obviously they didn't want to rule out the possibility of foul play in the initial stages of this investigation. But as days passed and the weather grew cold at night, they knew that if she was still out there, if she had just run off, that she would be suffering greatly. They also said in the initial stages of the investigation, pretty much right away, that her parents were being very cooperative with the investigation and they really didn't think that there was any reason to suspect them. For three days, there was absolutely no sign of Athena. However, after three days of exhaustive searches, the absolute most devastating outcome possible was discovered. The little girl's body was discovered in Boyd, Texas, around 6 to 10 miles away from her dad's house. During their investigation, police said that they learned that around the time of her disappearance, there had been a FedEx package delivered to her house. However, they found out later that it was actually a contractor company called Big Topson that was delivering packages for FedEx, so it wasn't FedEx themselves. Using this, police were able to work with Big Topson to find the exact truck and the driver of that truck that delivered this package. And that is when they were able to track down this FedEx driver to being a 31-year-old man named Tanner Lynn Horner from Fort Worth. Police initially mentioned that they had taken digital evidence to show that he had taken Athena, but now we know exactly what that evidence was. Apparently, there was a video camera on the truck that Tanner was driving, which literally showed him taking a young girl that looked similar to Athena. All we really know about Tanner Horner at this point is that he was this independent contractor who was delivering packages for FedEx. He was also known to be a musician, according to his Facebook page. He went to Azel High School and he worked as an Uber driver in the past. 
he doesn't seem to have any sort of criminal records within the counties that he's in right now. So he may have a criminal record elsewhere, but as far as it's been reported, he does not have any sort of criminal record. As of right now, that's pretty much all that we know about Tanner Horner. It's been said that after police officers tracked him down and arrested him, he allegedly immediately confessed to kidnapping and murdering seven-year-old Athena when he was delivering a package to their house. Initially, it was said that he didn't give any further details about this, but now that we have the arrest affidavit released, we pretty much know exactly what he told investigators. So, in his confession, he told investigators that he was actually backing up his FedEx truck when he accidentally hit Athena with his truck. He said that he got out and checked on her, but he noticed that she was not seriously injured. But he said at this point, he was still freaking out and panicking, so he put her in the back of the van. He said that once she was in the van, she was perfectly fine. He said that she was talking to him and told him that her name was Athena. Then, once she was in the back of the van, he attempted to break her neck and to kill her that way. But when that didn't work, he strangled her with his bare hands. And that's pretty much how he killed her. There's not really any more details on what happened in this situation, but when he was asked why, he said multiple times that it was because Athena told him that she was going to tell her dad about being hit by the FedEx truck that he was driving. He said that he was worried that authorities were going to find out and that that's why he decided to kill her. Which, personally, I don't buy that at all. I think, in my opinion, that Tanner is a predator. Maybe he did accidentally hit Athena with his truck and that's when he decided that he was going to use this as an opportunity. Or maybe he just saw her and parked and decided once again to use this as an opportunity. But I do think that he saw this little girl, whether it was after he hit her or not, and used it as an opportunity to live out some sort of sick fantasy that he's been wanting. He saw this little girl alone and at night, and he took her and he murdered her. I personally think that, you know, this is a seven-year-old little girl. She's not going to be able to memorize his license plate number, most likely. She's not going to know his name unless he told her his first and last name for whatever reason. So, even if she did tell on him and was able to say like the FedEx driver, yeah, he could have been tracked down and whatever, but he would have gotten in a lot less trouble. So I personally don't think that this is the reason why, just because it literally makes no sense. He literally hit her. He noticed that she was not injured. So at most, he would have gotten a ticket, most likely, and then fired from his job. He hit a little girl, yes, but if she wasn't very seriously injured and it was clearly an accident, he probably wouldn't even have served any jail time. So that is why I don't believe this. I think even in a state of panic, he's not just going to take this little girl who wasn't even injured and just decide to murder her because she might tell her dad that she was hit by a FedEx truck. After the confession, authorities asked Tanner if he would lead them to the location of Athena's body, and he did, and that is when he led them to a location near the edge of the water at the Trinity River in Boyd, Texas. That is where he dumped Athena's body, and it is believed that Athena died within one hour of being kidnapped. I don't think we know the results of her autopsy yet, but once we do, I will, of course, update you all with that information, whether she was seriously injured when she was hit with the truck, or if she was hit at all, or if she was sexually assaulted in any way. 
I do think her autopsy is going to be able to tell us a lot about whether Tanner is being truthful or not. As of right now, Tanner is sitting in jail with charges of capital murder and kidnapping, and he is being held on a $1.5 million bond. As for now, those who knew and loved Athena are keeping her memory alive by paying tribute to her whenever they can. Children at her school are wearing pink in her honor. And another very, very sad and gut-wrenching detail about this case is that Tanner was actually delivering Athena's Christmas present to her house when he saw her. Her mother had just purchased her a You Can Be Anything Barbie, which just makes me want to lose it and cry and just... This makes me so very sad because she was just going to spend Christmas with her father and her stepmother and probably his family, and then her mother was going to pick her up and bring her back home to Oklahoma. So the fact that she never got the opportunity to get her Christmas present, never got to celebrate Christmas, is just absolutely devastating. Now, Jacob, Athena's father, has actually filed a lawsuit against Tanner along with Big Topson, the contracting company that had hired Tanner to deliver these FedEx packages. He is accusing Big Topson of failing to implement safety policies and procedures. He is suing for $1 million in damages. For now, the owners of this company have not made any public comment but FedEx has come out with a statement saying, quote, our thoughts remain with the family of Athena Strand in the wake of this tragedy. We are aware of the complaint filed against FedEx ground. Obviously, this is a terrifying case. Athena couldn't have been outside by herself for more than 15 or 20 minutes before she was taken, and I personally think that it was less than that. I think that this situation was she was waiting in her room for a while, calming down after this argument, and she came out, and as she was coming out to go into the main part of the house, that is when she's taken. So, that is just speculation on my end. It's by no means fact. Maybe she was walking to a neighbor's house who were family, and that is when he saw her. I don't know for sure, but what we do know is that this happened literally within minutes. She went outside on her home's property just at the wrong time and she was murdered for it immediately. She had no chance and she was killed for absolutely no reason at all. This is a case where it almost just feels hopeless and impossible to take care of your children these days. I don't have a child but I can imagine anybody who does will hear this case and just think, I can't even let my kid out of my driveway anymore. They can't even be on my property anymore without worrying that they're going to be taken. It's, it's really, really disturbing to think that you literally have to keep your eyes on your children every second of the day and give them absolutely no freedom, but that seems to be where the world is right now. This isn't a case of her going off and riding her bike, you know, a mile away from the home and being kidnapped then because she went way further than she was supposed to. She literally was still on her property. She literally did not leave her house very far for what we know. She was literally in her driveway when she was taken in this crime of opportunity. It's just, it's repulsive to think about and it's very scary to think about for anybody who is a parent out there. I still do think that Tanner is a predator the line of thinking that he said does not make any sense whatsoever, and I do not believe a word of it. Once again, I don't think that he just hurt this little girl with his truck and that she was barely even injured and that she was perfectly fine, and he was so worried about her telling her dad that, she, you know, he was going to get in so much trouble for this. When I was seven years old, 17 years old, I barely knew the difference between a UPS truck, a FedEx truck, and a USPS truck, or any other delivering truck. I didn't pay attention to those types of things. All I knew was that packages were being delivered, and I was excited because maybe it was for me. Maybe it was a present for me. So, the fact that he thought that the seven-year-old little girl was going to be able to tell her dad who he was, tell him that it was this FedEx truck driver at this time that hit me with his truck and that he was going to get in so much trouble, it makes no sense. He could have been in a panic state, but once again, 
I just do not believe this whatsoever. I said it once, I'll say it again, Tanner is a predator. Athena's mother, Maitland, has spoken out since her daughter's death. She said, quote, Athena was robbed of the opportunity to grow up to be anything she wanted, and this present, ordered out of innocence and love, is one that she will never receive. She went on to say that Athena's favorite holiday is Christmas. She said, quote, the joy Athena gave her family and the joy she felt on Christmas is something we will never feel with her again. Now, instead, Athena will be cremated and she will come home in an urn because I'm not anywhere close to being ready to let my baby go. On November 30th, a FedEx delivery man drove onto Athena's father's property to deliver a package of what was supposed to be a Christmas present for our daughter. This is the package. It's the first time I'm seeing it. The package is containing, you can be anything Barbies. Athena was robbed of the opportunity to grow up to be anything she wanted to be. And this present, ordered out of innocence and love, is one she will never receive. Athena's favorite holiday was Christmas, as it is for many children everywhere. The joy Athena gave her family and the joy she felt on Christmas is something we will never feel with her again. I was supposed to bring Athena back home to Oklahoma after Christmas break. Now instead, Athena will be cremated and she will come home in an urn because I'm not even, I'm not anywhere close to being ready to let my baby go. I'm sorry. I will never see her bright blue eyes or her ornery smile again. I will never be able to hear her say, I love you, mommy. I will never be able to do her hair again or to hold her while she sleeps. I was robbed of watching her grow up by a man that everyone was supposed to be able to trust to do just one simple task, deliver a Christmas present and leave. Tomorrow will be the last time I get to see my baby. After tomorrow, when the silence sets in, Athena's family, including her three young sisters, will start the journey of all of the first without her. Her little sister's third birthday, then my 27th birthday, our Christmas Eve tradition, the first time in seven years of not hearing and seeing the excitement of Athena opening gifts from Santa and Sissy. I ask everyone to hold your littles just a little tighter for me. I want to take a moment to thank the community for the outpouring of love and support. From the moment Athena went missing, this community flew into action and they have not stopped. I have felt your prayers, I have read your messages and your letters, and I see your pink everywhere. There are no words to express how thankful I am for the first responders, law enforcement and responding agencies, volunteers, churches, businesses, and all those I, I may have failed to list. I'm also grateful to the media for helping, keeping, helping to keep Athena's story alive. I want everyone to know Athena. She was an amazing little girl who loved dancing, singing, and all animals dogs, cats, horses, lizards, and chinchillas. She also loves school and all of her friends in the first grade who are now also struggling with her senseless murder. Athena also loved flowers, but she was also not afraid to get down in the mud with the boys. She was her father's daughter. I noted that Athena's death will not be in vain. I will spend the rest of my life fighting for her so that no other family will endure such unbearable pain and grief that the monster attempted a monster attempted to take Athena's voice but we are her voice screening and hiring policies must be put into place so that monsters wearing delivery uniforms don't show up on our children's doorsteps please help keep Athena's light shining thank you So that is pretty much what we know for this case so far. As you guys have probably noticed, I don't typically cover these types of cases because in my day job, I work with a lot of children with disabilities and a lot of those children 
they got their disabilities from being neglected or abused. I see that every single day in my everyday life. So a lot of times these cases really can be too much for me. But as I heard the details of this case coming out, I knew that I needed to speak about this beautiful young girl. She literally was outside for a matter of minutes and her life was senselessly ripped away from her by a stranger. A lot of these cases, they say that stranger abductions are so rare, but this is one of those cases. She was murdered by a stranger and I don't even want to imagine what she was feeling in those last moments of her life, but that is where this case stands today. But again, that is all we know about this case. As always, with any recent case that I cover, I will keep you guys updated about any information that comes out in the coming weeks. My heart absolutely breaks for Athena and her family, her mother, her father, her step-parents, her siblings, and everybody else who loved her. They are going through so, so, so very much right now, so only kind words to them. They deserve nothing but comfort and peace in this time because they probably won't feel the peace in their hearts ever again because their beautiful little girl was ripped away from them so, so very senselessly. But that is where I'm going to end today's video. You guys know that I could rant on and on and on about these disgusting predators that we have to live with in our world, but that is where I'm going to end this video. If you like this video, please make sure to go ahead and leave this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I put out new true crime and mystery videos every single week. Don't forget to go ahead and turn the notification bell to on so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Make sure you go ahead and follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Both will be linked down below, especially with a lot of these more recent cases that I've been covering. Twitter is probably the best place to follow me because that is where I keep the most up to date on any information that comes out about any given case. If you have any case suggestions, please make sure to send those suggestions to my forum, which is linked down below. It's a Google form. It seems to be a lot more streamlined of a way to get these cases to me. So if you do have any case suggestions, please make sure to utilize the Google form that I have listed down below. With that, I hope you guys have an amazing week. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope to see you next time. Bye.